Um, hope you all enjoyed that. So I am extremely excited to announce our first customer keynote speaker of the conference, uh, Ravi Tander. Ravi is group architect for 407 ETR. Um, otherwise known as Express Toll Route. So this is a toll route encircling the greater Toronto area. The highway today has global recognition as really a scientific marvel and leader in its space. And over the 10 years that he's been at 407 ETR, Ravi helped create the roadway's mobile strategy. He led the design of the cloud-native real-time tolling platform, and at the center of the customer experience is a mobile app to serve over 2 million active customers. Here to tell us much more about how he did it is Ravi Chander. Ravi, come on up. Thanks so much. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Lauren, for a fantastic introduction. Absolutely. What a great presentation by Yogesh as well. Let's have another round of applause for him, actually. That was really, really wonderful. Absolutely great. You know, I'd like to start by asking each one of you to picture the following. It's the day of the interview for your dream job. You get up extra early, you get ready, and you head out. You check your phone, and of course, today has to be the day that every route is backed up for miles, except for one, a toll road. You've never used the toll road before, so you don't know if you're supposed to sign up for something, or is there gonna be a toll booth to slow you down even further? Are you supposed to carry exact change? Well, you decide to risk it. A short while later, you're at the interview with time to spare. How did that happen? Well, we'll get there. But first, let's picture another scenario. You're rushing to the hospital with your very pregnant wife in the passenger seat. You turn onto the toll road, supposed to be the quickest route, right as she turns to you and says, we're not gonna make it. You have to pull over. What do I do, you think, as you pull over to the shoulder of the highway? How long is it gonna take the emergency services to get to me? Is there anyone else around here that could help? A few intense moments later, you're holding your newborn in your arms, and both baby and mom are safe and sound. Let's picture one more scenario. Your old friend is coming to visit you from overseas. She lands, calls you up, and tells you that Google Maps is telling you the fastest place to your place is using a toll road. But she doesn't know. Are you supposed to have one of those devices in your cars? Are you going to get penalized if you don't? Is she supposed to carry exact change in US dollars? Your reply? Don't worry about anything. This one's on me. Before you know it, you two have met up and are catching up on old times. What would you say all of those scenarios have in common? And no, the answer isn't that they all use toll roads. <laughs> this morning, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what they actually have in common. But first, I have to tell you a little bit about toll roads. As much as we've taken them for granted, as much as they've kind of blended into the environment around us, we're actually surrounded by toll roads. I know we have a lot of friends from Europe here today. They're the birthplace of toll roads. In fact, if you were to add up all the toll roads in the EU, they'd circle the Earth one and a half times. They'd actually be four times longer than the Great Wall of China. They have toll roads spanning continents from France to Kazakhstan. But there is a lot of travel happening on toll roads right here in America. In fact, it's kind of fitting that we're in Florida today, since Florida leads the US in sheer number of toll roads, with more being added every day. I don't know if you guys heard, just the other week, three more toll roads are being built in the coming years, right here in Florida. So enough toll roads to circle the earth in Europe, and Florida's number one in sheer amount of toll roads. How about Canada? How many toll roads do you think there are in Canada? Any guesses? This, this isn't the peace sign, this is the answer. <laughs> two. And I guess it's two using the metric system, so that's like what, 1.3 for you guys in the States? <laughs> uh, don't judge me for using the metric system until you walk a mile in my shoes. Um, 1.603944 kilometers, I mean. 
So I can joke about being Canadian. I was born and raised there. And I can joke about highways. I've been working for one for the past 10 years. That's the one I want to talk to you about this morning, actually. It's just a highway, but it happens to be the world's first completely barrier-free all-electronic highway. You don't slow down. You don't stop. You don't sign up. You just go. It's just a highway, but it happens to have 2 million active customers conducting 1 million transactions a day. That's one transaction for every moose in Canada. It's, it's just a highway, but it happens to have 3 billion kilometers traveled on it so far to date. As Lauren said, it's the 407 Express Toll Route. You may have heard of it, maybe not. But this morning, we'll take a little road trip. And we'll make sure that we take some pit stops at those scenarios we pictured earlier. So what's the 407 ETR all about, anyways? Well, we're actually celebrating our 20th anniversary. So that means we began our journey at the turn of the millennium. And in 2011, we began our relationship with Progress. Using Progress's Corticon business rules engine, we effectively rewrote the most complex business processes we had. Now, I know a lot of people in the audience are probably familiar with Corticon. It's still the brains behind our most complex business process even today. Fast forward a few years. In the industry, the terms UI, UX started becoming part of everyone's lexicon. The world became much more focused on the personalized customer experience. So the 407 embraced that paradigm, first by completely reimagining its web presence. Using Telerik's Test Studio, we made sure that the experience on the web was as smooth as the experience on the highway. With a personal digital experience having vaulted to the top of the list, the next major milestone for 407 ETR wasn't to build just yet another mobile app, but a completely new product for our customers, and one that hasn't been built for anywhere. In order to do this, we decided to leverage Convey to be the backbone of our mobile backend. So why go mobile? I mean, after all, we're just a highway. Well, that may be true, but we have some lofty goals. Let's go back to that scenario where you were rushing to the hospital. As you turn onto the toll road, your wife turns to you and says, we're not going to make it. So you pull over to the shoulder of the highway, you take out your 407 ETR mobile app, and with one click of the button, you request assistance. Behind the scenes, a team of dedicated patrollers have been alerted to your request. And without you having to tell them exactly where you are, they're dispatched to your location. Back on the app, you're able to see the details of who exactly is coming to help you and how far they are. You remain in constant communication with them to make sure they know exactly what's going on and who and what to bring to help you and your wife. They arrive, and a few minutes later, you have a newborn in your arms, and both baby and mom are safe and sound. You see, we want to lead in the customer experience space. I'm sure if I were to ask, each one of you could recall a really good customer experience moment. I mean, whether it's shopping online, ordering food, watching Netflix, just catching a ride. We want to make sure that our customers' interactions are amongst their most positively memorable ones. So another key aspect of a really good customer experience is personalization. I mean, that means understanding exactly how our customers interact with us and using that to deliver services that are timely, relevant, and insightful. And as driving gets more sophisticated, as I'm sure you all know, we want to make sure we understand what the future of the in-car experience might be. And that starts not just with leveraging existing technology, but embracing new ones. So keeping all of that in mind, we rolled out the first stage of our mobile app recently. And this year, we're going all in. Now, before we go any further, let's take a second pit stop and see what happened on the day of your big interview. You decide to risk it and take the toll highway. You download the app. You head towards the on-ramp. And you get on, just like any other highway. There's no toll booth, thankfully. But there's also no signage that says you need a particular device. You're going to have to pay uh, some sort of prepaid model or anything like that. And doesn't that make sense? 
why would you need anything other than the phone you carry with you everywhere to interact with your toll highway? So you take the route that Waze is telling you to take. And as you exit, your phone buzzes you a notification. A short while later, you park, you head into your interview, and you check your phone. Sure enough, your trip got picked up. You even get a discount for being a first time user. You can pay for it right away. That was painless. It was simple. You just might start taking toll highways more often. So as you can imagine, a lot of pieces need to come together to make what you just saw happen. One way to try and do it is to try and create everything from scratch. That's what you're seeing up here right now. On the right hand side are all of the data sources that need to be accessed, aggregated, and exposed. I mean, that includes everything from customer information to what's going on on the road to trip information and a host of other data, all coming from disparate back end st stations and a heterogeneous technology stack. So we could have opted to write a bunch of custom code and custom adapters to make sure that everything dovetailed together nicely, because all this data has to be married up to the signals coming from the app so that the right data gets processed for the right person at the right moment, all in real time. Now, maybe that would have given us a little bit of flexibility to do all of that but with a tremendous overhead and a ton of code. Let's take a look at an alternate approach, one where we still have disparate backend systems and a variety of technology stacks, and we still have that same need to transparently meld all of it with the signals coming from the app in real time. But let's get rid of the custom code, the custom adapters, and let's replace it with a platform that handles all of our data collections for us that connects device data to backend data seamlessly, that does app notifications out of the box. You see, what Convey gave us was a really clean way of focusing on our value proposition without having to worry about all the glue. We found Convey opinionated in certain respects, but we happened to agree with its opinion more often than not. And where we wanted to tweak it, we could. So having said all that, I want to get into a couple of specific features because I think it's important to everyone in this room. We're the people that don't just use services, we think about, design, and build them. The first one is security. Let's go back to that scenario where your friend was visiting you from overseas. She called you up and said, Google Maps is telling her to take a toll road. Is she supposed to have a device in her car? Is she going to get penalized if she doesn't? She was just planning to Uber it. Your reply, don't worry about anything. This one's on me. You open up your mobile app. You request your friend to authorize you to pay for her trip, which she gladly does. And once she gets off the road, you're immediately notified that her trip has completed. You open it up, double check to make sure she actually took the right exit. And with a single swipe, you pay for her trip using your card stored in your Apple wallet. As for your friend, the process was completely seamless to her. She didn't have to worry about giving up her personal information. And on your side, you didn't have to worry that your payment information was being compromised. I don't think a day goes by where you don't hear about another company's systems being breached or yet another massive exposure of people's personal information. So it should be no surprise that security and privacy were at the top of our list of things we need to get as close to perfect as possible. Rolling our own security features would have been asking for trouble. I'm sure you guys agree. What we needed was we needed the flexibility to choose from multiple industry standard options to authenticate and authorize our users. We needed end-to-end -end security right from the mobile device through every integration layer. We needed the ability to audit all of this data to make sure that it was being kept secured. But most of all, we needed all of this baked in. Luckily, Convey offered all of that, which not only saved us a ton of development time, but it gave us a peace of mind that we were protecting our customers' information in the best way we could. The other feature I want to highlight is something that's really important to us as modern application developers. 
scalability. We live in a world where we expect all of our services to be available to us at the tips of our fingers, or I guess the tips of our tongues now. At the 407 ETR, we want to make sure that we're able to get the information we need from our customers, all two plus million of them, in real time. But more importantly, deliver the services that they need in real time. In order to support this, we've got to handle information at scale. And I'm sure a lot of you folks are working on the same type of application. With such an enormous amount of data going to and from our customers, it's only going to work if every single layer scales. So cloud-hosted platform that handles all of our APIs and data collections makes us absolutely confident that we don't have to worry that we're going to become victims of our own success. So, started out this morning by asking each one of you to picture a few scenarios. How about we do one last one? You got your dream job, and it's the day of a big presentation. You wake up early, you get ready, you head out. You check your phone, and as usual, it's the toll road that's going to get you to work the fastest. So you take it. As you exit, your mobile app buzzes you that you just got a free coffee from your favorite coffee shop. You grab it, head to work early, nail the presentation, and head home. Smartphones, smart homes, smart grids, we take all this stuff for granted nowadays. I believe smart highways are next. I also believe that offering a travel service that not only is highly personalized, but that learns and adapts to you, instead of asking you to adapt to it, is going to be the new normal. So maybe we're not just a highway after all. Thank you.